everybody. And this is going to give you an update on the Flash Forge Adventure 5M Pro 3D printer. This video is long overdue as I've had this machine for well over a year. I got this machine back in December of 2023 and of course it had only been on the market for maybe a few months at the time. I think it came out in September 2023 if, I'm, if I recall correctly. So I got this again December 2023 and I have been using it quite a bit over this past year plus and I must say I'm very impressed with this machine. So to give you just a little background, um, I got into 3D printing about a couple years ago, um, roughly actually 2022 is when I really started to pick up on 3D printing and in late 2023 I finally bit the bullet and got my own machine because I work at a community college and we have a fab lab which is full of 3D printers although they are getting a bit dated compared to today's standards but anyways so if you're not familiar with the Flash Forge Adventure 5M Pro it is a 3D printer that is high speed and also being the 5M Pro it's enclosed it has built-in HEPA filtration and it comes with a good variety of stuff out of the box including um, some various tools you get some sample filament and let's get you a look inside this thing I just changed up the filament a few minutes ago here you can see the integrated HEPA filtration so it can either recirculate air or it can actually exhaust air so on the left here you have this turbo fan which is commonly used when you're printing with PLA at high speed and I have to say that this thing has been relatively trouble free I printed a bunch of stuff with it um, here are some samples up on top of the machine some things I printed with this 3D printer now a lot of stuff is PLA but we also have a couple of pieces here that are um, polycarbonate PETG blend such as this little gear right here this is a, a modeled up replacement gear for a hand mixer and this right here is actually an insert that I 3D modeled in Tinkercad for a, a 1.9 inch RC wheel uh, beadlock wheel and of course we had this funnel this was from Thingiverse we have this hard drive to SSD adapter this was some, um, also from Thingiverse we have this CPU storage piece. This was uh, from Thingiverse. We have this name tag. That's something I put together myself in Thingiverse, or excuse me, Tinkercad. And of course, the 3D Benchy. This was like the first thing I ever printed with this thing, um, as it comes with the file on the included flash drive, as well as actually stored on the memory of this device. And I'll say that over this past year, since I started using this machine, there were a few bugs, um, but Flash Forge had released uh, new firmware updates regularly. Matter of fact, this thing has a firmware update available right now. I have not yet installed. It currently has 2.7.6, and currently we have an update available, but I'm not too worried about that right now as it's working just fine. But this thing, it gives you a lot of functionality. I mean, it gives you a lot of options in the menu. Of course, here is where you go to access your G code. So whenever you flat, whenever you um, slice STLs and upload them to the machine, they stay there until you delete them, which is pretty handy if you're wanting to go back and print stuff. And in addition to um, fixing bugs, Flash Forge has also added new functionality in various areas of this machine. Here's where you go to load filament. Here's where you can manually jog the machine, uh, turn on fans and stuff like that. I'm not going to go too in depth with this but um, again I mentioned this thing has been relatively trouble free. I have not had any major failures and in, in most cases prints do turn out okay once in a while I will have a print fail but it's relatively uncommon usually when that happens I just have to clean this um, surface which by the way is held on by a giant magnet so this print bed is magnetized and the build plate comes right off it's a dual side build plate 
as you can see there just pops right into place so this machine when I got it it was I think I got it for I think the price with the discount at the time was like $549 I've seen these go for less than $400 um, more recently but of course the price right now could vary due to the ongoing trade negotiations with China and the United States so if you're in the US um, the price could vary depending on what tariffs going to into effect and all that good stuff but um yeah so I've used this thing to print a whole bunch of stuff I really enjoy it it's actually I mean it's very reliable it's never really let me down so I printed with PLA I printed with ABS I printed with the polycarbonate pet G blend and I've also tried printing with what's called POM, which is very, very difficult to print with. Um, very hard to print with, and again, it's not the fault of this machine. Um, but for stuff like PLA, PLA Plus, which has actually PLA Plus there, um, polycarbonate PETG or PETG or um, ABS, this thing, I mean, does does this fine. And what's nice about it being enclosed and having the integrated HEPA filtration is I couldn't be printing stuff with ABS and you don't even smell it in the room because I mean it filters that stink right out and don't you know like I say it it keeps the quality of the air in the room decent so we're gonna go ahead and start printing something here something I need to print I'm gonna select this right here so this is actually something I modeled up myself. It is actually a uh, seven cell Nikomo high drive battery holder for the Traxxas Stampede 4x4. Um, basically I had edited an existing STL to create this. So we're going to start that. Just to witness this thing start printing something. So you can see this machine, the print bed, moves on the Z axis. It's not a bed slinger which I like which by the way I should note it comes with the 0.4 millimeter nozzle as well as the 0.6 I think it's a 0.6 millimeter nozzle I've only used the 0.4 so far but what's cool about 3D printing if you're new to 3D printing is you can use 3D printers to print fun stuff like name tags or just you know figurines stuff like that but they also come in handy if you're going to prototype stuff um, in fact, it's actually not very difficult to get in 3D modeling. Uh, one good option out there is Tinkercad, which is totally free. Um, it's online based, and you can create your own STL files, or which is models. You can create your own models, download as STL, and slice them and print them. Now, so far I've only used flash print with this because that's what I'm mostly familiar with. So. At my place of work, Community College, we have a fleet of Flash Forge Adventurer 3s. And I'll just say that um, back in 2020, they seemed impressive, but now that technology has um, progressed quite a bit, they're like toys. <laughs> I'm gonna be, let me, let me clear. They're like toys. But to see this product from Flash Forge, the same company, this is built way better. So if you're working with, let's say, an Adventure 3, maybe an Adventure 4, um, the Adventure 5M and 5M Pro is much, much improved over the older generation products. And so, for example, I should note that there are two versions of this machine. You have the 5M Pro, which we have here. And there's also the 5M, which is an open frame version of this. It lacks, I think, the turbo fan. It also lacks the built-in camera, which I should note, this has a built-in camera. And what's cool about that is it can, you can use it to film or do time-lapse filming of your prints being made, which are accessible through the USB jack. Don't seem to be accessible through the network. But... I should note that is one thing. There's a few different things here and there. But the 5M is a much less expensive. I think it's like $100 less or so than the 5M Pro. But both are good machines in my opinion. I would personally suggest spending the extra money and getting the 5M Pro if you're looking to print with anything other than PLA. Because for things like ABS, stuff like that, you want to have something that is 
a um, enclosed machine and of course having the built-in filtration is nice so let's watch this scene begin to 3d print So of course as it begins it runs relatively slow because it's doing the first layers. This is all customizable based on how you slice the model. And I should note that what we're printing is actually 100% infill and it's relatively big. So it's actually big enough to hold one of these batteries to put in perspective. That's how big this model is. And it can do it in less than three hours and that's again 100% infill. And the reason why we have 100% infill is because we need it to be high strength because, well, let's face it, my Stampede 4x4 slammed into a tree and broke the last one. So, yeah, that's, that's what happens sometimes. Now, with, see, with 3D printing, um, they're nice for making fun stuff like this, but also you can use 3D printers to make, let's say, replacement parts that you can't just buy off the shelf. Now, of course, something like this is not going to be as durable as, uh, let's say, something that's injection molded. But, so this, for example, this mixer gear is something that me and my colleague at work modeled up to replace the broken gear in my hand mixer. And yes, these are a little brittle. Sometimes this part here breaks, but, I mean, the fact is, I mean, if you break one, just throw you print another one. And this polycarbonate PG blend is very strong, very durable. Um, in our cases, let's say if you just need to make something for your own use, you can do that with a 3D printer. You can model up something, something in Tinkercad and just uh, 3D print it. So 3D printing is definitely, well, <laughs> I see we have some adhesion problems. We'll have to stop that. It's funny I talk about uh, how great it stuff adheres, but I'm going to have to uh, clean this bed off. Okay, so I removed the build plate and cleaned it real good and also applied some adhesive to it. This is actually what comes with the machine. It's this uh, 3D printing adhesive. It's like a liquid that comes out of this container and um, now you can see that uh, it's everything's sticking just fine. I have to do this just once in a while but um, you can see how we are getting a few layers in now and get you an idea how fast this thing runs. So for example that 3D bench I showed you earlier which is uh, this little tugboat looking figure very commonly known in the 3d printing industry so this was printed using g-code that came shipped with this machine and it printed this in 14 minutes yes 14 minutes and it was printed using the included burnt titanium PLA filament just to put in perspective Yeah, definitely not bad at all. Um, like I say, I do recommend this machine. Now, probably the only big gripe I have about it is the stock location of where you mount your spool of filament. It comes with a bracket that gets installed, I think it's on the, on the back of this thing. And I just didn't much care for that, having to reach around here and try to deal with the filament. So the first thing I did was I 3D printed a uh, filament spool holder. And this is how I typically run filament into this thing. So the um, tube is back here and of course this has a run out sensor that's back in here. And just to give you an idea how it sounds with the lid open, there you go. Again, pretty quick. Now, is this the best 3D printer? I can't say for sure on that, um, but I can say that it's served me well so far, and I don't foresee having any issues with it in the meantime. I mean, it's like I say, I've printed a bunch of stuff with it. So, I do recommend this machine, highly recommend it, and I do have a video of me unboxing it, so if you're curious, on how to unbox and set up this machine. I'll put a card in the upper right corner of this video that way you can go check that out. So anyways, I know it's kind of over the place. I know real script to this video. Just want to give you guys sort of an update and rundown on this machine and my experience I've had with it over the past roughly year and a half. 
Like I said, it's been a nice 3D printer. Um, I highly recommend it. Go get you one. <laughs> get into 3D printing. So, anyways, the rest of this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody. Thanks for watching this video from QCreer Channel. If this is your first time, please subscribe to the channel and tick the bell so you get notified of a new video I post. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment and share this video as well as the channel with your friends to get the word out. In addition, I have a second YouTube channel that's QCompMTDX. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for your support.